Well, I don't know if you guys remember this one. This is a 2021 Arctic Fox travel trailer that had a loose rubber membrane. And uh, I expressed concerns that that didn't seem right to me. And the factory agreed with me because the factory builds a really good product. And uh, the selling dealer might have been less than honest about it. So the owner didn't want to take it back to that dealer. He's asked me to go ahead and secure that rubber membrane. So hopefully this shouldn't be too much work. We'll see. For anybody that doesn't remember, or if you have forgotten or you never saw it, I did a quick little video on this roof. Try to put a link somewhere, however that works. I don't know how that works. But I don't know if you can see this bubbly right there. This is a rubber roof. This is EP, EPDM. So it's not stretched out because this stuff's really stretchy. It's like a rubber band. It's just not glued down. I don't feel any sort of uh, adhesive trying to pull it down. So this isn't the classic case of uh, ballooning that you would normally see at the front, usually on TPOs. This is just, I uh, feel like they didn't get uh, enough or any adhesive right here. So what I'm going to do, because I feel like it ends right about here and right about here and just back to there. So I think I can just pull this molding off back there. I don't have to pull off the front cap molding or the vent and I should be able to lift this up and get some glue back underneath there. So that's my initial hope. First thing I have to do is uh, basically take the screws out of this, pull the molding back. And I'm just uh, basically gonna wedge a block back here to keep the, the molding pulled back without bending it, rather than trying to take it back past uh, this point right here. That should give me more than enough room to work. All right, so first step is pull this insert molding out. And this is mostly decorative. And I'm... Um, this is going to be, feels like a Proflex. It's just going to be white Proflex, is what it feels like. So it's not silicone, it's not Dicor. Uh, that'll get me out of there. These are quarter inch tech screws. Just pull out all of those. And then, yeah. And then this right there, that feels like non sagging Dicor sealant. It's very gummy. It's very gummy. All right, there's a lot more to go. Oh, no. Mike, uh, yes, are you right there? Huh? I dropped a screw on the ground. Oh, screws on the ground. Yeah, I'll forget it, and then the trailer will run over the tire. So I'm just going to go ahead again underneath it right there and start prying up on it. Should just be some butyl putty holding it up all right looks like that's gonna come free pretty easily well I mean relatively easily I just don't want to pry against the rubber right there because I don't want to rip it or tear it by prying against it you can see the uh, butyl putty and this is actually high quality butyl putty just gonna carefully pry this back. I don't want to bend or mar anything up. And the nice thing about putty butyl is that it repairs itself when you put it back together. So you don't have to completely scrape everything clean. All right, that's probably back far enough, I think. I think. Okay, so with that. Just putty knife just holding the molding back this way. I can get it out of my way. I will take and start probing the rubber membrane. It looks like there's some staples in it, if I can see them right there. Well, I think we're running into our first snag on this job. Uh, they didn't cut the, the rubber at the bottom of the molding like I would have done. Cut it. They put the rubber on and then cut it really short. So it's only about halfway down this molding. So I gotta be really careful. I don't have any tails to hold on to to pull this thing up. So, uh, I don't know if you can see, that's the top of the molding and that's about halfway down the molding. And you can see the staples are at the bottom of it so I have to get all the putty out of the way because uh, I gotta make sure I don't damage this rubber because if I rip it past that point, then I gotta use a turnabon, right? All right, since that's so tight, I'm gonna have to lift up from underneath pull out each staple so that I make sure that I don't uh, rip this thing. 
You know, the staples be out of the way anyways. So normally when you're just replacing a roof, you just rip this whole thing off. You don't care if the roof rips because you're replacing it anyways, but I desperately care if this roof rips right now. Roof rips right now. I mean, from what I see, they did a pretty good job putting this roof on, but I do not like the way they put so many staples in right here. And even like right back there, those staples were barely even in, They're only half the rubber. If they would have let it the rubber come all the way down past this molding right here and then cut it loose there's big tails so you don't have to worry about the staples ripping everything up so that's where we're at i got paid by the staple here i don't know they also did what dicor likes you to do is put a uh, butyl on the bottom underneath the rubber too not many manufacturers do that and uh that's making a lot more work for me, but I'm more concerned about what I'm seeing when I pull this back. So trying to pull the rubber back, it's stuck to the sidewall pretty well with this butyl underneath. And I have to make sure, again, I'm not going to tear the rubber. So I just have to pull that back. But when I look at it, you can see there's really no glue on the rubber. I can feel it tacky right there, but definitely pull it up and that's why I said I was concerned about what I was gonna see because that's loose all the way to the front so I'm very afraid but it's hoping to be an easy job it's gonna turn into a big job so I'm gonna have to contact the customer let them know that I have to pull the rubber all the way back at least to about this point right there which is unfortunately in line with that satellite and that vent so that means those have to come off the front cap molding has to come off and then the other molding on the other side just so I can roll this back and then glue it back down again to say that's disheartening would be an understatement because I didn't plan on this taking so long now I'm not to uh, change some schedules around so I uh, spoke to the customer and uh, tear it all apart, I guess. Go inside, take the vent apart, start taking this stuff off. I ran into something kind of interesting on this side, just taking this side apart. So these screws, that I was just talking good things about on the other side, are, are shorter. So this is the screw from the other side that I like that length, and this is the shorter screw. So this is substantially shorter. Most people don't understand there's usually like two crews, one on one side, one on the other side, building these things, and they go for uh, whatever screws. I've had square, square screws on one side, hex screws on the other side. Uh, it's weird taking these things apart, not knowing what screws they're using. But I thought that was kind of interesting. Man, they used to definitely use a lot of staples on this thing. And you can see them all right there. And even though they did the right thing by putting butyl behind the rubber, it sure makes everything a lot more difficult. But also, it's pretty loose on this side too. I still have to take the front off. And then speaking of screws, again, this is why I don't really like uh, hex head screws being used. They got uh, wedged underneath this trim. And so I actually couldn't get a driver on there no matter what I tried. So I just had to break the screw from underneath. And then when I do these screws on top, I try to peel these up because again, hex headed screws to get covered in sealant you can't get them off just by and then it clogs up the inside of your nut driver that's why i prefer the uh, phillips number two or uh, robertson's number two square bits but you can poke through the sealant with those Pulled out some of these screws, and I'm a little concerned that they weren't grabbing on them much. But they're not grabbing on them much. So that's great. So that means because I took this apart, 
now I am responsible for putting it back together because if it falls apart, I'm the one that rebuilt it the second time, even though it wasn't built right the first time. So chances were pretty good this would have come loose over time because it's not those screws weren't going into any framing. Great. All right, so you can see the factory. They did go underneath the fiberglass front cap. Uh, I know there's some people out there that says these things can just be pulled back pretty easily, but this is one big monolithic thing. In order to pull it back a little bit right here, it has to go all has to be released all the way down on the side just to move it a little bit. So I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna just try to pull this back. Yep, can't do that. Or if I'm going to cut it. I don't really want to cut it. I don't really want to pull that cap either. <sighs> this job just got huge. I'm going to loosen up that front cap. And then, of course, just to add insult to injury, if you guys just watched my video a few back about these fantastic vents, they did use quarter-inch screws on those again. So... Not only are these going to be hard to take out, but in order to get those off, take the vent lid off. And that satellite dish. And then I can at least pull this roof back. And then at that point decide uh, if, if the roof is loose everywhere. This, I'm, I'm just exploring at this point, but if I, if, I, if I cut the membrane right here, it'll be really, really short. I wouldn't be able to get it on top of here. And I don't like having a seam just covered by the, it's just, I don't know. There's the right way to do it. And, Cause eventually you can see the tension that the fiberglass is its normal state right there. It wants to be up and it's gonna pull those screws out eventually. And then the water's gonna get under there. And then we know what happens after that. It rots the front wall. Fun, fun, fun. And these are the screws they're using again too. These are about, I don't know, at least a half inch or an inch too short. They should be a lot longer than that. Because that means only half that screw is actually going into the roof. That means it's all just going into the deck, not into the framing that should be around this opening. All right, because I can't get those quarter inch screws that are underneath this hinge. Guaranteed to be leaking too. Yeah, those aren't even fully set in there. I don't know if you guys can see. Those aren't set all the way down because, of course, the driver can't go through that hole. So I don't want to use hex headed screws. It's really weird that I have to tell people this. Or at least manufacturers. I mean, hex headed screws were used. Usually before 2000, usually they stopped using them uh, before 2000. Industry went to either Phillips or Square. I don't know why they went back to hex headed screws. Maybe it's just a uh, shortage right now because of the world's uh, on fire. So yeah, that wasn't all the way in there. About eighth of an inch was still sticking out because again, I can't get the driver past that point right there. So I couldn't actually get all the way down there to compress the seal and seal the hole. But I did at least make a large flaps here so I can easily pull this back without ripping the roof. If they would have left some big tabs on the roof edges, that would have been nicer. So that looks like it's down pretty well, but That's definitely not down well there. So the roof's loose, now I have to take this front cap loose so I can um, kind of pull it forward so I can get underneath that, that rubber that's underneath it. It's half the reason why uh, when I do a rubber roof, I go over the top of the cap because trying to go underneath it, you have to pull the front cap. And no matter how many times people tell me, oh yeah, you just, Front cats are easy, just shove it underneath it. You can't just shove it underneath there. You just damage the roof membrane. So this is just a screw cover that 
goes over the top of that metal. And of course it's gonna be sealed on both sides. So that means when I put it back, oops, yeah. So I'm gonna have to cut this loose so it doesn't damage decals. That's what this is for. So now I just have to take all these screws out. Of course, they use square bits or square head, square headed screws. I mean, they have them, obviously. You can see them there. Why not just use those on the roof, too? Well, it's hard to see, but there's a, that butyl putty right about here underneath. So it's sticking down the front cap of the roof. So I have to carefully pry this thing loose and then I can actually get to work doing what I need to do. The worst part is regluing the roof is going to take me like five minutes. Putting everything back together is going to take the rest of the day. All right, so what's holding it up underneath right there is the same stuff that's on top right here. It's this beetle putty, and it sticks to itself really well, so I have to prevent it from sticking to itself as I'm prying it apart. So I'm just going to use basically some soapy water so it shouldn't stick to itself under there. Well, it's been a lot of work getting that free right there, but I think... Oh, I'm free. <laughs> it's free over there. <laughs> so now I have to be careful because I don't want to have the whole thing flop forward. Because that would be awful too. Well, I think we got it. At least enough. So first things first. <laughs> the front caps back out of the way. We put some screws on the side. Screws back in the molding right there to keep this uh, front cap from hinging out and falling off and really holding it it's gonna be underneath so it's just a big it would just be a big hinge enough hinge off and that would be bad now with this much of the rubber exposed now I can uh, kind of treat it like I would a normal rubber roof install I'm just gonna go ahead rather than trying to fight because there's a thousand staples right there too yeah. rather than trying to fight that Cut the rubber roof right here. It doesn't look like it's stuck a little bit better at the front on the driver's side. <laughs> that was really loose right there. Yeah. Alright, so we got this pulled back pretty far. Uh, I, mean, I can feel it. It's not sticky at all. I mean, I can feel stickiness, but it's not sticky right here. It's a lot stickier right here, but not much better. Uh, if I'm gonna do an autop an autopsy of this uh, installation, I think this glue they just let dry too much. I don't know if um, this is. You can see there's a little bit of glue that grabbed onto here, just a little bit, but right there, there ain't nothing. That's just like it came off the factory roll. So either they just put it way too light and let it dry too fast, or uh, they let it dry too too much. So I'm gonna be bringing it back to. There's at least a seam right there in the roof, and it'll go all the way to the side, and then we'll just be gluing this roof back on again. Like uh, the whole industry has been plagued with the ballooning on the roof driving down the road because the, the, the rubber roof isn't secured down and then driving down the road uh, the low pressure on the front just kind of sucks the roof up into a balloon. You'll see them driving down the road like that. Uh, TPO, it gets stretched and damaged. This is rubber roof. This is the first rubber roof I've seen this with, with this problem. Uh, so yeah, basically we're doing a rubber roof install but we have to take everything apart carefully without damaging anything. 
Well, I went ahead and it reached back below to feel if there was any framing right here. There's edge framing right there. You can kind of see a screw sticking at it. But there's no framing underneath right there. Manufacturer didn't say that. I guess didn't want there to be framing there, so I'm not gonna reframe this whole thing. Just you think they would have put framing underneath there. So this is really nice plywood they use for deck, but it's maybe three eighths plywood, half inch plywood. I would have liked to have some framing underneath it like this to actually grab that front cap molding a little bit better. So you can see right here all those nails right there. There's a truss framing underneath there and there's a truss framing underneath right there. And those holes are just where that molding was, so it doesn't seem like there's any framing under it to grab screws better. I hope who's ever uh, at the factory see these videos and says, hey, let's re uh, rethink how we're doing these rubber roofs. Because this isn't the only manufacturer. Every manufacturer I've seen had this problem. This should be the last bit we have to pull back now. So now it's just going to be gluing down the roof again. We'll be using the Dicor bonding adhesive. This is water-based. And what we want to do is what the factory didn't do. We want it to be wet. So it rolls out white and it, clear, and it dries clear. We want it to be wet when it goes out. That way it adheres to here and it adheres to the deck. And of course, this glue will stick to itself. All right, so that's all rolled out. Now we'll just uh, get on the side and we'll roll the uh, membrane back into it. All right, the right there. Okay, so now the roof is glued down. Let's take a look on the underneath it. So we're gonna look underneath. Now you can see the glue is definitely on the rubber, which is what we want. All right, with that stapled back on, should be able to put this molding back on though. It's just, I can't believe they cut it so short. I really wish this was longer so I could pull this a little bit tighter. Now these screws are long enough, so I'll use these again, but I'll change out the screws on the other side. Yeah, I really wish I could be pulling this rubber tight as I'm screwing it down. Alright, so this molding's on. All I have to do is put the insert on and then put a cap of uh, non-sag, non-leveling lap sealant. So this is dicor that doesn't flow and turn into a cool puddle. So on this side, and instead of the short ones, I'm gonna use these uh, longer ones, panhead. That'll be easier at least. So with the non-sagging uh, die core, its real main purpose again is just to redirect water so that it doesn't go behind this molding. Even if it did go behind the molding, it's not that big of a deal because it's got the two butyl seals on it. But it doesn't hurt. But if it was uh, self-leveling, it would just go and sag all the way down and be gross. Of course, I can't put the uh, vents on or the satellite dish on uh, until the uh, roof sets up. Because if I walk around up there, it's just going to loosen up. The roof will just move and shift. So I have to let this stuff cure at least a day now. That's why I said it's going to take two days now. And yeah, I know I usually go over the uh, the cap with the rubber. But um, this is how the factory had it. And uh, just trying to keep it to factory, right? All right, we're going to use the same non-sagging uh, die-core right here, just on the corners. Mostly so that uh, it seals, obviously, right there. It gets behind there, because the factory didn't get behind there. With a 
the cap's gonna go, but mostly to lubricate. As I put the cap on, it'll kind of uh, act as a, a friction release or lubricate it so that I won't snag on the roof. And so that's what we're gonna look like. And then I'll come back once the roof is or the cap is on. I'll put a bead right here too. I just have to take the screws loose, slide the cap back, and screw it down. And push a little bit more. All right, I think we're lined up pretty well right there. So now I can screw it down. All right, I got the sealant underneath the cap now. What I do want to do is um, drill holes and actually secure the cap down to the roof so that it's secured. Uh, the molding on top is just going to be a backup. So we'll have primary underneath and then the backup on top. So I'll drill a hole there, then I'll countersink it. And I'll use a taper headed screw. So it sits flush. Alright, so that'll do a pretty good job sealing and keeping that down. I mean, we're doing our best here. Alright, so with those done, it's oozing out pretty well. I'll put one more on top on each corner when I'm over on that side. Alright, so I'm going to use longer screws putting the vent and the satellite dish back on. That way this is actually going to that framing that we saw as a picture frame around here. Trying to pick off this stuff, this old stuff, you'll spend a full day trying to do that and you end up damaging the roof so I'll just clean this up use some mineral spirits to uh, prep it and the new seal it will stick to that really easily so it's just some mineral spirits and you can see it cleans it up really well it actually preps and makes a surface really sticky but it's absolutely vital that you don't get it, let it pool on this uh, membrane it will damage the membrane mineral spirits will all right so then that's sealed up and again we're just using uh, self-leveling lap sealant all right so i just got new butyl putty tape on there and this will be pretty much the last piece that has to go back on after that i just have to seal everything up and then this will be done now to seal up the front right there and this side right there they used white proflex on this side and then clear on this side. So I get to do the same thing using ProFlex. This is clear stuff. This is ProFlex and it's white. And before I go and put the molding on right here, I do want to make sure I fill as much of this gap in right here underneath that I can. Not vital here, but it couldn't hurt either. These screws, I'm using different screws now. They should do a little bit better. It feels like they're grabbing onto something. So just a few more to go, and then I can just do the lap sealant. I think what really happened is once I cut the, the rubber, it relaxed a little bit. But it's still way back over there. So we're still underneath that front cap like it was. You should be able to see because the front cap is secured. The molding itself isn't what's securing the front cap. It's just going to be the backup seal secure now. So these, this molding, these screws get, get loose because they didn't put framing underneath there. The front cap's not going to open up. A good compromise. Some might say the factory should have done that originally. I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah, me. I think they should have. I was able to get that pro seal underneath right there so that uh, it oozed in pretty well. Now I just have to seal all the way around. This stuff is definitely a lot harder to tool. Uh, the two screw heads like they did. Very pretty. Very, very pretty. All right. So the last thing we have to do, because... Uh, we're all sealed up on the sides now. Just put the lap sealant on the front cap on both sides. 
and then on the screw heads. So we're just gonna use a good old Rudy self-leveling die core. So that's pretty much how it's gonna be looking like. Just a little bit more to go. All right, and with that, this roof rebuild is it. Well, re recovering is done. So hopefully it doesn't balloon this time. We did add a solar panel too, I didn't show that. All right guys, so there it was, fixing a brand new 2021 Arctic Fox. So there it was guys, putting the roof back down on a 2021 brand new Arctic Fox travel trailer. Looks like maybe the glue dried too fast and they didn't get it incorporated into the glue fast enough. Factory agreed that it was not supposed to be loose like that. We were hoping that it was just going to be a little section right there, but it turned into this entire front eight feet section. And uh, hopefully we caught it in time. I didn't see any signs of water leaks, so that's a good thing. And uh, I feel good about it. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm not gonna lie, this stuff looks like Mod Podge. Yeah, it kind of smells like it too. It really does. It's a high tech bonding agent. James Bond.